Are we next? What's going on in Florida? Is what's going on in Florida going to happen here in Massachusetts? That's the million dollar question, right? Buyers are dreaming for it to happen and sellers, well, they're scared to death about it happening. First, let's take the idea of a market crash like 2008 right off the table. Not gonna happen. Now that we have that cleared up, let's take a look at what's going on in Florida. Inventory's up a lot all across Florida. And these hurricanes and the spikes in insurance rates are not going to help. But let's just file that under time will tell and put it in the uh, common sense file cabinet. This article had a great quote as to what is going on. You can sell just about anything. If the price is low enough, people are buying homes in Florida. It's not like no one is buying, but sales have plunged and the price can no longer be whatever. It's as if some common sense has found the market, and you can see it in the median listing price in the Florida since June of 2022. I have my own theory here, but I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. Active listings have surged 35% year over year in Florida to 185,696 houses on the market. This was the highest since September of 2016. Demand has decreased, and we're now seeing the amount of listings and thereby the pricing. Now here is what is interesting about Florida and something we don't have here in Massachusetts. Big institutional investors have turned into net sellers. I'll say that again because I was shocked when I read this. Yes, big institutional investors, the hedge fund guys and the private equity guys, they've started selling. It was headline news every other day about the single family rental landlords and them buying up single family houses on the open market. At one point they couldn't buy enough so they switched to building their own build for rent subdivisions. And this made sense as these communities are more efficient to operate than the individual houses scattered all over the place. In earnings calls, some of these hedge funds and PE firms started mentioning that they were selling off their more scattered rental properties that they had bought in the foreclosure process. In other words, they were selling the lower margin properties that after 10 plus years of ownership most likely need to be rehabilitated in the very near future. Here's the crazy part. In Tampa, Orlando, and Jacksonville, institutionally owned single family houses account for nearly 5% of all the listings on the market according to analysis by Parcel Labs and cited by the Wall Street Journal. Keep in mind that these same institutional funds own between 2 and 4% of the single family houses in these markets, which makes them a net seller. And to get in front of the underlying question, these guys have some big profits locked in. They can afford to take a little haircut on the sales price, but these guys aren't going to give these properties away, take huge price losses. In other words, these guys are not going to trigger the start of a crash. Here's where I disagree. The New York Post had an article on this with a quote that said, I have no doubt that a combination of high prices, high mortgage rates, and high insurance has just totally collapsed the market. First of all, the market hasn't collapsed, but I think what we are seeing now is what I will call the front loading effect. COVID pushed people's timelines up. Let's go for a time before COVID. There was a general cycle of people getting older and buying a property in Florida as they retire shortly before they retire. Now, I don't know the stats, but I'm sure they could model a certain number of people each year moving down, say from Massachusetts and buying and moving into people's homes who, uh, let's just say they made their final move. It's the natural flow of property sales in Florida. Fast forward to COVID, stuff went sideways in the world and people moved up their timeline to move to Florida. People a couple of years away from retirement may have pushed up their retirement or decided to finish out their last years taking advantage of this new virtual workforce. This pushed a lot more buyers into a market where a limited amount of housing made asset prices jump. But now they're paying for it as these people front loading their move, thereby cannibalizing the national progression of sales that would happen in future years. That is why Florida is going to be different from Massachusetts. The demand curve has changed. This is why I'm not worried about what's going on in Florida spreading here. The article cites a Mr. Holmes who's trying to sell this house for the last eight months. He bought the house for $550,000, put an additional $50,000, eight months of price reductions, and his price is now down to $583,900. Then adding the realtor fees on top of it, this guy's going to take a bath. It seems that the market can no longer really absorb the quick sales in Florida. If a Florida home seller needs to sell fast, then they still have the option to go to a we buy houses like company and getting a cash offer on their property. If you're looking to sell fast, then make sure you find a reputable company that can actually close on your house. There are a lot of wannabe investors that are really just straw people out there and won't actually be able to perform and just leave a seller holding a bag of issues and walk away with not even thinking a moment about the other person that they just hurt. 
If you're looking to sell quickly in Florida or Massachusetts, really, or in any state that is, then reach out as my company, Bluefin Property Buyers, we're a cash buyer, and we love buying houses. It's Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker, turned real estate agent, and investor that has sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate or are thinking about buying or selling a home, then please reach out as it would be a true pleasure to help you. Until next time.